The remarkable pyramids of Egypt, situated in Giza, are unquestionably among the most incredible structures on our planet, resiliently standing the test of time and nature for countless centuries. It's worth noting that numerous significant figures throughout history have been captivated by the mysteries concealed within these colossal monuments. One standout individual among them is Nikola Tesla, who stands as one of the greatest inventors of the modern era. While Tesla uncovered some astonishing truths about the pyramids and regrettably passed away without receiving the recognition he deserved, his renown has enjoyed a recent resurgence. In fact, his groundbreaking ideas paved the way for the development of technologies that are now an integral part of our daily lives, including smartphones, Wi-Fi, alternating current electrical systems, and more. Beyond his patented inventions, which were occasionally viewed as eccentric, Tesla also delved into various other enigmatic and highly confidential projects, one of which was related to the Egyptian pyramids. His journey to unravel the secrets of these pyramids commenced when he was just 20 years old and became a lifelong pursuit. With around 2.5 million stone blocks weighing nearly 6 million tons, the Egyptian pyramids stand as enigmatic and majestic structures that draw visitors from all corners of the globe. If you've seen or read about these pyramids, you'd likely concur that they hold concealed mysteries waiting to be unveiled. Some of these mysteries served as the inspiration for Nikola Tesla's groundbreaking ideas and inventions, particularly concerning the potential for the pyramids to generate power, which is truly fascinating. For a considerable time, many believed that the pyramids served as tombs for the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. However, it might astonish you to learn that not a single mummy has ever been discovered within their walls. All the mummies rest in the Valley of the Kings. Additionally, there are no indigenous Egyptian inscriptions or artwork on the pyramids. This fact is quite remarkable, isn't it? Who would invest such significant resources in constructing such colossal edifices without a clear purpose, especially now that we've confirmed they weren't built as tombs for Egyptian pharaohs or as monuments to gods? Nikola Tesla, fueled by his extensive research into ancient structures, concluded that the pyramids contained an astonishing amount of energy. Keep in mind that, during his time, electricity was not well understood. Tesla began to contemplate the possibility that the pyramids might hold advanced technology within them. He became convinced that the pyramids harnessed power from electromagnetism. To him, it seemed plausible that the pyramids were constructed with some form of crystal energy, and the chambers within them were designed to manipulate electromagnetic fields. He also proposed the theory that the materials, such as the stones used in the construction of the Great Pyramid, possessed energy-storing properties derived from the sun and the moon. Consequently, he suggested that the pyramids could have been engineered to generate an energy field capable of supplying electricity to cities. In 1905, Tesla filed a patent application in the United States titled, The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. This patent detailed Tesla's plans for a series of global generators aimed at tapping into the ionosphere to harness electrical energy. In his vision, he perceived the Earth as an immense electrical generator, possessing boundless energy, revolving around two magnetic poles. He later referred to this triangular design as Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid. Moreover, he believed that the specific locations of the pyramids, rather than their shapes, were the source of their energy. This belief led him to embark on the construction of a tower facility he envisioned would one day electrify an entire city. Today, this tower is known as the Tesla Experimental Station, situated at the base of Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs. It is also recognized as the Warden Cliff Tower or Tesla Tower on the East Coast. Tesla carefully selected the locations for his pyramids, taking into account the principles governing the placement of the pyramids at Giza, as well as their relation to the planet's elliptical orbit and the equator. The construction of the tower was grounded in his theories about how the Earth could conduct signals. According to Tesla, the prototype would transmit and receive data in unlimited energy, potentially reaching as far as Paris, France. Regrettably, following his mysterious demise in 1943, Tesla's discovery and his device faded into obscurity. Nonetheless, his legacy endured. Scholars and researchers, even after his passing, delved into his theories about the power of the pyramid, contributing to the unraveling of many mysteries surrounding these ancient structures. What Tesla aimed to convey to us about the pyramids may seem somewhat enigmatic. Perhaps he invites us to explore the power of something far more ancient than we initially believed. To shed light on this, let's delve into Tesla's concept of numerology. 
According to him, the numbers 3, 6, and 9 held the key to the universe and held significant importance for all of us residing on planet Earth. He observed that these numbers naturally appeared in the universe, from galaxies and star formations to evolution in nearly all natural systems. Some speculate that his fixation on the numbers 3, 6, and 9 influenced his preference for the pyramidal shape and certain fundamental mathematical logarithms. Tesla considered these numbers to be the primary elements of a universal mathematical language, which might explain why he engaged only in activities aligned with the number 3 or its multiples. Tesla's daily routine was marked by behaviors that clearly reflected his fascination with the numbers 3, 6, and 9. For instance, he had a habit of driving around a building three times before entering, preferred hotel rooms with numbers divisible by three, and famously resided on the 33rd floor of the New Yorker Hotel in New York City, specifically in room number 3327. Breaking down the mathematics of it, 3 plus 3 equals 6, and 2 plus 7 equals 9. His daily schedule included a mere three hours of sleep each night, and he meticulously polished his cutlery and dishes with 18 napkins before using them. When making decisions, he always involved groups of three people. Additionally, any calculations he performed related to objects or circumstances in his environment were intentionally structured to yield results divisible by three, guiding his subsequent choices and decisions. So, what was Tesla trying to communicate through his unmistakable fixation on three, six, and nine? After all, humanity did not create mathematics. Instead, we discovered it, recognizing that mathematics serves as a universal language governing the natural laws that apply to all inhabitants of planet Earth. Consider vortex mathematics as an example. 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 2 equals 4, 4 plus 4 equals 8, 8 plus 8 equals 16, where 1 plus 6 equals 7, 16 plus 16 equals 32, where 3 plus 2 equals 5, 32 plus 32 equals 64, where 6 plus 4 equals 10. You may notice that these number patterns cycle through 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, and 5, repeating in that sequence. 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Interestingly, 3, 6, and 9 do not adhere to this pattern. Recognizing that these numerical patterns are found in nature, ancient civilizations mirrored them in their architectural endeavors. Could it be that Nikola Tesla's obsession with these numbers was an attempt to unveil certain truths using the Great Pyramids as a reference point? Let's delve deeper into this notion. The precision of the dimensions of the pyramids is truly remarkable, as they align with the compass in a way that seems achievable only with modern engineering techniques. The Pyramid of Giza, constructed from 2.5 million stone blocks and weighing a staggering 6 million tons, soars to a height of 481 feet and spans over 13 acres. Achieving alignment of this monumental structure to within 1 15th of a degree of true north is a nearly unimaginable feat of precision. Even the base of the pyramid is level within a mere three quarters of an inch, and despite each of its sides extending over 755 feet in length, they remain within two inches of each other. What's even more intriguing is that the pyramids don't have perfectly flat sides. In fact, each side is slightly concave, a detail that becomes apparent only when viewed directly from above or during the equinoxes, when the pyramids cast their shadows, it becomes evident that the individuals who constructed these remarkable edifices possessed an exceptional understanding of the Earth's dimensions. By multiplying the height of the pyramids, which stands at 481 feet, by 43,200, we arrive at a figure of 3,938.685 miles. Astonishingly, this measurement is incredibly close to the Earth's polar radius, with an astounding accuracy rate of 99.7%. Similarly, when we calculate the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid, which measures 3,024 feet, and multiply it by 43,200, we obtain a measurement of 24,734.94 miles. Remarkably, this closely matches the Earth's equatorial circumference, with a remarkable accuracy rate of 99.3%. It's worth noting that while the Great Pyramid aligns perfectly with the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west, there exists a very slight discrepancy of just 1 360th of a degree, which can be considered negligible. This leads to a compelling question. 
How did the ancient builders, who lived during a time often referred to as the Dark Ages, acquire such precise knowledge of our planet's dimensions? The answer may lie in their fixation on equinoxes. Equinoxes mark the point where the sun's path in the sky intersects with the equator, resulting in equal lengths of day and night, each lasting for precisely 43,200 seconds. While some skeptics might dismiss the connection between equinoxes and the Earth's size as mere coincidence, engineer Glenn Dash suggests an alternative perspective. He posits that the Egyptians couldn't have relied solely on the pole star or sun shadows to align the pyramids. Instead, they likely harnessed the power of the autumnal equinox, a notion that opens up intriguing possibilities. Achieving precise alignment for these astonishing structures had previously overlooked equinox measurements as a potential method. This omission was rooted in the belief that equinox measurements demanded an exceptionally high degree of accuracy. However, Glenn Dash challenged this perspective, unveiling the potential precision inherent in equinox measurements. Dash conducted experiments aimed at demonstrating that equinoxes could indeed yield accurate measurements. During the fall equinox in 2016, he meticulously tracked the point of the shadow throughout the day, creating a smooth curve of points. As the day concluded, he employed a tall piece of string wrapped around a pole to intersect two of these points, resulting in an almost perfect east-to-west line. This method, known as the Indian Circle Method, showcased that while the measurement wasn't absolutely precise, the margin of error was comparable to the slight discrepancies observed in the alignment of the Giza pyramids. The construction of the Great Pyramid itself featured a minor error of merely 0.05 degrees in its measurements. Despite the use of triple and hexagonal symmetry in these ancient structures, we can observe that three pyramids align perfectly with the constellation of Orion. It's intriguing to note that the number 43,200 holds significance in this context, representing the axial precession of the Earth. Furthermore, this number is a multiple of 72, which symbolizes the years it takes Earth to complete one wobble of its axis. Remarkably, these numbers, 72 and 432, recurrently appear in ancient mythologies and sacred texts. Consider, for instance, the number 72, it holds importance across various cultures and contexts. It signifies the number of languages spoken at the Tower of Babel, the count of names for God in Jewish Kabbalah, and the tally of temples at Angkor Wat. Additionally, it represents the number of degrees of longitude spanning between Angkor Wat and the Great Pyramid. In the realm of sound, 432 Hz is believed to be the harmonic frequency that resonates optimally in music. To delve even deeper into the realm of numbers, the Hindu Rig Veda consists of an astonishing 432,000 syllables. These intriguing connections lead us to ponder. Could it be that the ancient Egyptians employed a mathematical language that we are only beginning to comprehend? Indeed, the precision with which the Great Pyramid's measurements correspond to the Earth's dimensions when multiplied by 43,200 raises questions that cannot easily be dismissed as mere coincidence. Consider this. If you extend the North Pole of the Earth into the heavens, it points directly to a star known as Polaris, or Pole Star. However, due to the Earth's processional wobble on its axis, this celestial alignment shifts over a cycle of 25,920 years. This intriguing phenomenon hints at a deeper connection between the pyramids and celestial navigation. Now, let's explore the evidence suggesting that the pyramids might have served as structures for generating and harnessing energy. These colossal edifices are constructed from limestone and other materials that were likely transported from distant locations. Each stone fits so impeccably together that no gaps can be found between them. The casing stones, essential to the exterior of the Great Pyramid of Giza, were meticulously cut and transported from a quarry located roughly 500 miles away. What makes the Great Pyramid especially fascinating is the choice of materials for its construction, which appear to possess properties related to electricity. Specifically, the white tufa limestone used in the exterior insulation lacks magnesium, making it an effective insulator. Conversely, the interior and chambers of the pyramid were constructed using materials that conduct electricity. This choice hints at the possibility of controlling the release of energy from within the pyramid. Furthermore, the blocks used in the intersections of the pyramid were crafted from a unique type of limestone containing small amounts of crystals and metals. These properties, namely the crystals and metals, facilitate the transmission of maximum power. It's noteworthy that Nikola Tesla's tower operated on a similar principle to the pyramids, 
raising intriguing parallels between the ancient wonders and pioneering technological advancements. Let's dig into the basics here. When it comes to wireless power transmission, there are some key things at play. First, you've got to have sunlight, water under the tower or pyramids, and the tower needs to be at just the right height in the sky for the energy to spread out. Now, here's the interesting part. Those pyramids had gold on top, which is really good at conducting electricity. In the middle, they used granite, which sort of acted like a middleman for the energy. So, with this mix of materials and setup, they could send energy wirelessly. In a study back in 2018, a bunch of scientists wanted to figure out how the pyramid focused energy. They played around with radio waves at different frequencies to see if the pyramid would react to electromagnetic waves of a certain length. What they found was that the pyramid kind of huddled up electromagnetic energy in its insides and underneath it. According to these scientists, radio waves with lengths anywhere from 200 to 600 meters could make the pyramid get all excited. The closer the wavelength was to 200 meters, the more it perked up. Now, in 2019, there's this guy named Eric Wilson who wrote a paper called Large Scale Thermoacoustic Generator. In it, he explained how granite and other rocks can keep vibrating, and that makes electrons move around inside them and on their surface. So, the folks who built the pyramid used a mix of science and musical vibes to create a power generator that was perfectly in tune with how the Earth naturally rocks. This natural rhythm comes from the moon's pull, creating tidal energy. This tech is pretty amazing and can make clean energy without limits. But here's the big question, where does all this energy come from? That's where Nikola Tesla comes back into the picture. He built his Warden Cliff Tower on top of an aquifer that sent out negative ions to the tower's tip. The tower had copper and iron rods stretching down into the water. When they zapped electricity into the tower, it was meant to spread out into the world through the air. There were devices designed to catch this energy and put it to good use for everyone. Basically, Tesla was all about tapping into the ionosphere and sending energy into the Earth through vibrations so that others could make use of it. The Great Pyramid follows a similar idea. It's also built above an aquifer, and recent findings have uncovered copper pipes and iron rods inside the structure. Plus, the pyramid's tip is made of gold. Back in the day, the River Nile used to flow pretty close to the pyramids, and that could have created an electric current under them. This electric juice would climb up through the pyramid's granite stones, making its way to the golden tip. They call this phenomenon physioelectricity, which is all about gathering electrical energy from natural movements, like people walking or the flow of water in a river or underground aquifers. Water would move into the lower chambers and then flow out, creating a sort of pumping action that made the pyramids vibrate. These vibrations would resonate precisely in the king's chamber, where there are some fancy devices designed to grab the Earth's natural energies and turn them into electromagnetic energy. Much like Tesla's system for dishing out wireless power, which relied on the Earth's natural rhythm, the energy produced by the pyramids could have been endless and eco-friendly. But here's the twist in history, both the tower and the Great Pyramid might have faced some trouble from within. Realizing the groundbreaking potential of his work on power transmission, Tesla got financial backing from JP Morgan, who ponied up over 150 grand to back the project. Tesla's plan for wireless energy transmission became public news in 1898. He believed it could make him super famous and wealthy, letting him send energy worldwide, kinda like how Marconi's radio telegraph system sent messages. Tesla had already shown that wireless power could work on a smaller scale, but he needed more money to finish the big project. So he went back to Morgan and asked for more cash. But instead of giving him more dough, Morgan pulled out, claiming Tesla broke the contract. To make matters worse, Morgan then backed Tesla's rivals, Edison and Marconi, who were rising stars with their own inventions. Morgan even spread the word worldwide to steer clear of Tesla's work. By 1915, Tesla went bankrupt and couldn't hold on to the Wardenclyffe property. In 1917, they took apart the tower and sold it for scrap, putting an end to the project, sadly. The Great Pyramid might have met a similar fate. What if something big happened that made it stop working? There's more to the story. They found hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid traces in the southern shaft. Plus, there was zinc chloride and ammonium chloride in the northern shaft. These chemicals can make hydrogen, and when you mix ammonium chloride with sulfuric acid, it can go boom. Now, when it comes to an explosion, considering how intricate the pyramid is, it could have been something they could control. 
In 2001, they found burn marks on the ceiling of the Grand Gallery, right above where those resonators used to be. And cracks showed up on the granite beams on the southeast ceiling of the King's Chamber. Egyptologists said it was because of an earthquake, but the damage looked more like it happened in places where there was a bunch of highly compressed, super-hot hydrogen. Besides, the King's Chamber walls got messed up, splitting apart and looking like they were bulging out. So, what do you think? Does Nikola Tesla deserve all the hype and praise he gets today? And just imagine how different the world could have been if his game-changing inventions and ideas hadn't been buried with him. We'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments.